The Wall Street Journal calls on Moscow to release its reporter, denying Russia's claims he was spying for the US government. In a first keynote speech on EU-China relations, Ursula von der Leyen says Beijing is becoming more oppressive at home and more assertive abroad. A good day for Europe's energy transition. EU negotiators have provisionally agreed to double the production of renewables across the bloc by 2030. The UN has called for a demilitarized zone around the Russian-controlled Zaporizhia nuclear power plant to ensure safety on both sides. Britain's King Charles III has become the first monarch to speak before Germany's parliament as he praises the country's strong bonds. A correspondent for the American newspaper The Wall Street Journal has been arrested in Russia on charges of espionage. A court in Moscow reportedly authorized Evan Gershkovich's detention in Yekaterinburg, east of the Ural Mountains. Reporters Without Borders say Gershkovich, who is a U.S. citizen, was investigating the private military Wagner Group. But the Kremlin maintains he was spying for the U.S. government. The Federal Security Bureau claims that Gershkovich was gathering secret information on Russia's military industrial complex. The Wall Street Journal denies the allegations and said he was engaged in, quote, normal journalistic activity. The publication has demanded the immediate release of the journalist who faces up to 20 years in prison. Europe must be tougher on China. That's the assessment of European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, who described Beijing on Thursday as becoming more repressive at home and more assertive abroad. Ahead of a trip to the Chinese capital with French President Emmanuel Macron next week, she set the tone during a speech in Brussels for what she's calling the new era on EU-China relations. I believe it is neither viable nor in Europe's interest to decouple from China. Our re relations are not black or white, and our response cannot be either. And this is why we need to focus on de-risk, not decouple. The visit comes following a high-level meeting between Chinese President Xi Jinping and Russia's Vladimir Putin in Moscow, as concerns grow that Beijing may provide support for the Kremlin's war in Ukraine. Any peace plan which would, in effect, consolidate Russian annexations is simply not a viable plan. We have to be frank on this point. How China continues to interact with Putin's war will be a determining factor for EU-China relations going forward. One key point of the European Commission president is that China wants to use Russia's current weakness to grow its own geopolitical strength and influence, and that Moscow is increasingly becoming the junior partner in the relationship. It is clear from this visit that China sees Putin's weakness as a way to increase its leverage over Russia. And it is clear that the power balance in that relationship which for most of the last century favoured Russia, has now reversed. Miko Huatari, who runs a European think tank that's been sanctioned by China, says that the EU needs to adjust to a more bipolar world, but it must do so on its own terms. We cannot have a trusted and deep relationship with a China that would support and continue to support the Russian war machine. So um, better than being pushed around by others to tell us what we need to do in this space, it's better for us to define the terms of our engagement. We well, it's a very urgent business indeed. Um, um, there are risks um, that um, will probably increase. Our dependence is extremely high in certain aspects. Um, and the geopolitical tensions around China are increasing. So um, it's an urgent business, but at the same time, let's do it properly and not overreact. Von der Leyen also says that the EU needs to reassess a landmark investment agreement negotiated with China that's been put on ice since 2021 due to a number of ruptures in the relationship. EU negotiators have agreed to raise the production of renewable energy to 42.5% by 2030. That's 10.5 points higher than initially agreed. 
Environmentalists say the switch is crucial if Brussels is to meet its climate and energy targets, especially in the wake of Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. The 27 member states have committed to wean themselves off Russian fossil fuels by 2027. But the European Commission says the cost of accelerating the construction of wind and solar farms and the transition of electricity grids could cost 113 billion euros more than previously forecast. This new pact must now be approved by the European Parliament and each member state before it becomes law. An extremely brave and important decision. That's how King Charles described Germany's military support to Ukraine in an historic address to the Bundestag in Berlin. On his first visit as monarch, he praised Berlin for putting aside its historically pacifist stance to war. As größte europäische Geber für die Ukraine haben wir entschlossen reagiert und Entscheidungen getroffen, die früher vielleicht unvorstellbar gewesen wären. Der Entschluss Deutschlands, der Ukraine so große militärische Unterstützung zu kommen zu lassen, ist überaus mutig, wichtig und willkommen. Charles III says he wanted to mark the beginning of his reign with a tour of reconciliation in Europe, as relations between London and the bloc worsened after Brexit. The King's visit of Germany concludes on Friday. The head of the UN's atomic energy watchdog says things are not improving at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in Ukraine. IAEA director Mariano Grossi made the assessment on his return visit to the complex on Wednesday. Russian forces seized the plant more than a year ago. Grossi has been pushing for a demilitarized zone around the power station, which has come under repeated shelling. But now he feels he should narrow his aims and concentrate on specific protection measures for the facility itself. It is obvious that military activity is increasing in, in this whole region. Every possible measure and precaution should be taken so that the plant uh, is not attacked and can be protected. I am trying to put on the table um, realistic, viable proposals that can be accepted by all. A nuclear accident with radiological consequences will spare no one. Russia, Ukraine, the rest of Europe, it doesn't matter. So we need to, to avoid that and I am optimistic that uh, it, is, it is possible. The plant has been hit several times during the Ukraine war, though there have been no reported hits to its reactors. Both sides blame each other for shelling. The facility has suffered repeated losses of external power needed to cool its six currently shut down reactors. Ukrainian forces are continuing to resist Russia's onslaught in the eastern city of Bakhmut, which has seen the longest running and bloodiest fighting since the war began. Both sides have sustained heavy casualties in the battle for control of the city that analysts say holds no great strategic value. But Ukraine's president says the city is symbolically important. He will sell this victory to West, to his society, to China, to Iran, to all the countries. He will sell it to his society. That was the first step. Now, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I will, I will have this issue with Ukraine. Then another step, another step, another step. Zelensky visited the front line on Tuesday in a bid to boost his troops' morale. Speaking to reporters on the way back to Kyiv, he also revealed his intentions to revive dialogue with China. Of course, I gave all the diplomatic and public and not public to president of China. Uh, to yeah, to leader of China, and I want to speak with him, because I have con I had contact with him before full scale war, but during all this year, more than one year, I didn't have, and w I really wait when our teams will uh, find like the solution. You, but no plans yes. at the moment. Yes. Okay. Yes. Would you invite him here to Ukraine? Oh yes, we are ready. We are ready to see him here. 
Ukraine's leader fears that if Russia conquers Bakhmut, Moscow may garner international support for a deal that could require Ukraine to make significant compromises. Four former bankers with the Swiss affiliate of a major Russian bank have been found guilty for failing to properly check accounts opened in the name of a Russian cellist with long-time ties to President Vladimir Putin. Millions of francs flowed through two accounts held by Sergei Roldigin in Zurich without sufficient checks, the court heard. The defendants were handed suspended sentences which, if violated, could lead to heavy fines. The verdict follows a one-day trial on the 8th of March based on revelations in the Panama Papers leaks in 2016, which implicated Roldigin. It took years for prosecutors to unravel the web of transactions and bring the case to court. All four defendants denied the charges, which include allegations of violating Swiss anti-money laundering laws. Gazprom Bank Switzerland is in the process of winding down its operations and was not itself facing charges. Dozens of schools across Bulgaria have been closed for three days following bomb threats made via email and phone. Students had to be evacuated and police stepped in to search the buildings for explosives. No bombs have been found so far. The motive is unclear, but with schools used as polling stations, the disruption may be linked to Bulgaria's general election on Sunday. Most threats were made to schools in the capital Sofia and in the Black Sea ports of Varna and Burgas.